So AB 1228, which was passed in uh, 2022, was a bill that established what's called a fast food worker council. This is a group of nine people who are appointed by the governor and the Senate president and the assembly speaker. Um, and they get to decide what the wages are going to be for all fast food workers. So as you can imagine, um, the fast food worker industry really didn't like that idea because, you know, think about it. If you are a McDonald's franchise owner, now you're going to have this unelected board of bureaucrats telling you how much you have to pay your employees. They don't dictate that people have to increase how much food they're buying, but they are going to dictate how much money you have to pay your employees. So this bill passed in 2022. Um, this bill was introduced by Assemblyman Chris Holden. Now, Fast forward to when all the um, chaos started to ensue, because at the beginning, when this bill was introduced, many of the people in the fast food industry, as you can imagine, opposed this vociferously. One of the people who did that was Greg Flynn, who is the CEO of Panera Bread. He was not happy about this. Now, there were some changes made to the bill. The fast food worker industry said, if you do this, we're going to introduce a ballot initiative and put it before the voters to undo what you are trying to put into law. So the labor union, SEIU in particular, and the Service Employees Labor Union, they said, oh, okay, well, hold on, let's talk, let's negotiate. Okay, so they bring everybody to the table, or everybody that they invited, um, and they tried to hammer out a deal. Within that deal, they snuck into the bill this this section about, well, if you are a fast food chain, but you sell bread as a standalone within your um, company, then you are exempt. And that's a very odd exemption. And then Greg Flynn from Panera Bread got very, very quiet. So I found that to be interesting. So now you go to February of this year and Blue Bloomberg News broke the story that Number one, this was snuck into the bill and nobody really knows why. Number two, the author of the bill is claiming he didn't know anything about it. The governor's office is claiming, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. And then we have the discovery that everybody who was at the negotiating table with SEIU had to sign non-disclosure agreements. That is a binding agreement that says whatever happens at this negotiating table you may not discuss it with anyone outside of the people at this negotiating table. So then Governor Newsom's office says, oh, geez, I, I don't know anything about that. We certainly didn't make anybody sign an NDA. Okay. And then, of course, Greg Flynn, he's saying, well, you know, I don't really know about this. And, and nobody wants to talk. So the problem is this bill you know, they are advocating on the behalf of the people of California. So if you're going to put laws and policies in place that affect Californians, not just the people who are working in the fast food industry, but those who buy their food, which means their cost is going to go up, they have a right to know what went into this bill, what was the logic, and what was negotiated. But because they have a non-disclosure agreement, we can't know that. And it's very interesting to me that everyone is pointing the finger in every other direction other than back at themselves, and no one wants to talk. SEIU, um, the Service Employees Labor Union, they they required people to, to sign this NDA. They said, anybody who's going to be at this table, we need this NDA. Now, the governor's office will not disclose whether or not they were part of that request, and there's no way we can prove whether they were or not, but they're saying, no, we didn't have anything to do it. So now there is a push to find out, okay, who was in this meeting? Let's see some notes from this meeting. Let, you know, give us something because this is very, very odd. You know, NDAs are used, yes, but in this particular case, I mean, I've never seen something like this used in the entire time that I served in the legislature. The bill author, um, he was interviewed in the halls of the Capitol again by Ashley Zavala with KCR, and she asked him very directly, you know, were you, was this your idea? How did you all come to this, you know, place with this policy? And he claims that he didn't know anything about it. Now, I will tell you that I find that very hard to believe because when you are a bill author, if anything is done to your bill, whether it's an amendment that um, perhaps the appropriations committee made to your bill, 
you know about it. It's, it doesn't happen, um, you know, in secret. Typically what happens is you go to committee, maybe the committee members say, oh, this isn't quite right. It's not fully cooked. Can you make this change or this change? And in the committee, you can say, okay, yes, I'll, I'll accept those changes. And then that, of course, is recorded. So it's not as though changes to a bill happen in some far off location. The author is always looped into those discussions because sometimes the committee will say, well, look, in order to pass this bill, you have to make this change. And as a bill author, you can say, I am absolutely not going to make that change. And so what happens is either you drop the bill or they kill it, but you have the option of saying yes to an amendment or no to an amendment. How Chris Holden is suggesting that he knew nothing about an amendment to this bill is beyond me because I don't understand how that could possibly happen. Now, keep also in mind the CEO of Panera Bread, who is now, as far as we can tell, exempt from this new law. He donated $100,000 to Gavin Newsom's recall campaign. He then went on to donate about $68,000, I think, to his re-election campaign. This, this same man, the CEO of Panera Bread, has bragged in interviews about the fact that if he has a question for Gavin Newsom, he can text him at any time because he has his phone number. They went to high school together. I mean, these guys know each other. They are tight, and now they're acting as though they have no pre-existing relationship. And I find it odd that this exemption is in place now. Suddenly, no one wants to talk. And the CEO of Panera Bread recently announced that they were going to raise wages to $20 an hour, which tells me he believes he is exempt because he wouldn't have to raise the wages if this council was going to impose that on them. And then there's a Panera Bread in Sacramento, just, I mean, I've been to it many times. They were advertising a cashier position for $16 an hour. That is well below the $20 an hour that this council says they are going to impose on these franchises next month. So there's something fishy going on here and the NDAs are clouding this all the more. So there are a lot of people out there wondering, um, you know, if this is such a harmful law, why would the legislature pass something like this? And the answer most times in cases like this comes from the fact that the labor unions in California are very, very powerful and they tend to get what they want. And oftentimes they have the governor's help in doing so. Case in point, this law exempting Panera Bread from having to impose, you know, certain wage rates that um that that others aren't you know are going to have to follow so i can't tell you the the logic behind um why they would put something in place knowing full well that people are going to be outraged by it but i do see it a lot um and the fact that a ballot initiative was threatened is very telling and they meant business you know we had the same issue with um, AB5, the bill that had to do with independent contractors and forcing them to become employees. And then you saw what happened was Uber said, hold it right there. We're not going to take that line down. And so they ran a ballot initiative, which was successful. And so I think SEIU said, well, I don't think we want to go down that road again. So let's negotiate. And I'm sure that there was, you know, some sweet deal that those at the negotiating table got, or at least were satisfied with. But if it's good for one, it should be good for all. And why is a donor to the governor not having to follow the same rules as everyone else? Because every franchise owner out there, every fast food establishment out there wants to be able to pay their bills, pay their employees and remain you know, open for business and successful. Now, the state of California would never put up with something like that. If, if the federal government said, well, California, uh, we've decided we're going to dictate what your minimum wage is in California. And we think that minimum wage, because it's so expensive to live in California, it should be $40 an hour. Oh, and that's going to include all of your government employees. They all have to get paid $40 an hour. Do you think the state of California would take that line down? Of course not, because it would bankrupt them. And that's what they're doing with all of these fast food franchises. You have a number of fast food workers who are members of a union, right? And SCIU represents many of them. So they have a vested interest in getting for their members what they believe they deserve. Now that's, you know, up for debate, but that is SCIU's job. And it doesn't matter how much it costs the franchise owner. That's not their interest. Their job is to get as much pay 
as many benefits, everything as they can for their union members, because that justifies their existence, right? If I can say as your, you know, union head, well, look, Joe, uh, look, like I got you a pay raise. Isn't that great? And this is why you should stay a union member because unions in California have been losing membership. When you lose union membership, you lose something very important, and that is union dues. And those union dues go then into campaigns to elect people to do things like AB 1228. If you haven't checked out CaliforniaInsider.com, we highly recommend you do that now because we're going to have a lot of news and videos there. And on top of what we have there right now, we are building a really big platform to cover what's happening in California. So you can be informed. We're going to have more shows, more videos from all aspects of life in California. Go to CaliforniaInsider.com and we'll see you there.